Hi everyone, I'm just a couple of minutes early. I typically go on right at 6.30, but thought we'd go ahead and get a little bit of a head start. Uh, this is what we're gonna be painting tonight. This is an 11 by 14. This one is an eight and a half by 11, so just a little bit smaller. So we'll just do a little bit smaller version. I didn't have another size of this, but a couple of new techniques that I'll show you or little tricks um, that I will show you on this tonight. And maybe he needs a name. I don't know, Frosty? <laughs> I don't know, but we're gonna do a snowman tonight. Definitely not snowing outside here in Texas, but hopefully we'll get some. So I'm gonna set this little guy right over here so I can kind of look at him as we go along. And if this is your first time on, my name is Pam Savage and I am owner of Young at Heart Creations. I love to teach others how to paint. I love to paint and it is just uh, something that is so relaxing and I love watching others. So I hope you enjoy watching me and learn something from me. Um, it's been a busy, busy week. We still have our little grand dog here and she's just done wonderful. Uh, the other one, Myla, she went home, um, let's see, she went home Sunday. So they're kind of missing each other. I guess you call them dog cousins is what they would be. So a couple things I want to thank you for watching. And if you're on here, hi Veronica. Uh, Veronica's one of my co-workers, a sweet, sweet lady. And I enjoy crafting uh, back and forth uh, things with her. She had a little bit of an emergency this weekend and so I was able to help her a little bit with that. If y'all hear some talking outside the door, it's the grand dog wanting in and she's a little bit shy. She's not sure about this ring light in here. But anyway, so I'm glad that you're on here and um, I just wanna thank you for watching and I've got several new followers in the last week and several new likes and you all loved my bandsaw pictures and everybody's wanting to go get a bandsaw and let me tell you it is worth it it's a little bit different than a scroll saw a scroll saw is more like a sewing machine and you can go little bitty intricate things uh, the bandsaw can't really do the small intricate things but I cut all my door hangers out I'll just cut them out first with the jigsaw off of the big board just get them down a little bit to get them in the scrolls I mean not the scrolls all the bandsaw and I've cut hundreds of pieces with them and just love it the one I did have was a smaller version and I think it was 12 to 14 inches uh, in the gate so it was hard to get some of the bigger door hangers in it but I've cut so many things out with it but this one's much bigger and wider and I can get all these gigantic um, door hangers through it and uh, bigger pieces of wood and I just love 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 it I'm enjoying it so much hi Ashley um, are you guys painting tonight or are you just gonna watch tonight okay so if you just hopped on this is what we're gonna be uh, doing tonight kind of a side view so that's a little bit different I am hauled around I thought we'd do just a regular snowman kind of like the one in the background that I've done but I thought this would be a little bit different a little side view and we are going to just get going on that so the first thing <clears throat> i've used is um this is deco art colonial blue so it's kind of a, a sky blue and pretty much you know any blue that you've got that's along that that color maybe baby blue and we're going to add just a little bit of white in it and the reason i'm going to do that oh good i'm glad y'all are painting great Okay, so Ashley and the kids are painting tonight, so that's good. I do have a little bit of sad, sad news. You know, I've been announcing that I'm going to be doing paint classes or paint parties once a month at Hobby Lobby. Been so excited. I worked all weekend getting things ready for that, and I got a phone call today um, that Hobby Lobby Corporate called uh, all of their, or sent out an, an email, I guess, to all of their stores stating that they've kind of changed their mind and they're not going to ha have classes until after the first of the year. So I'm still going to be the one doing it. Um, we'll do it once a month, but it's just going to be uh, put out a little while uh, after the first of the year due to COVID. So, you know, I understand. And um, so uh, that'll just give me more time. I'll be ahead of the game when, when we are ready after the first of the year. So any of you that have signed up for that, I did see some interested and I've been getting some messages on that. So we are just going to postpone it for a little bit and they said till after the first of the year and then we'll get those started up. So I'll just kind of 
change my what we were going to paint we were going to do the gingerbread guy this time and uh, we'll do something different depending on I don't know if it's going to be January or February so what I'm going to try to do <clears throat> at Hobby Lobby is stay a month ahead of the season so like um, in January we will be doing something maybe heart themed for February so that you'll have your pieces ready for when the holiday comes so um, that's what I've been working on and I cut things out all weekend for that so hopefully we'll get back on track January or February and you guys can sign up for that class and we can all be together again in person okay so let's get started and uh, we're gonna do the background first we're gonna do the whole background in this blue but we're gonna streak a little bit of the uh, of some white in it so I'm gonna get a little bit of that blue and I'm gonna use my handy dandy I love it you know my big big flat brush it's flat because it's flat across it's not angled or anything and I get these at Walmart um, so let's put a little bit of white it's not gonna take a lot of white because we're going to uh, do it mostly in the in the blue so I'm gonna put just a little bit of white now I'm gonna bring you down so you can see what I'm doing that would help wouldn't it okay so let's put a little bit of white on here. Now, uh, some people I know they tr they treat their um, they treat their canvases. These are supposedly pre-treated, um, so I'm not gonna do anything with it. I'm just gonna start right on it, and let's put a little bit of blue here. Let's shake that one up a little bit. Ooh, that almost matches my shirt. Okay, so we're going to put mostly blue because that's going to be our background. And I'm just going to do the whole thing and then we'll paint over it with the white. So let's get first, it's got something in it there. Let's get some blue on here and just go to town. And we're just going to go all over it. And it might on canvas, it, this feels different than wood, than the wood that we've been painting on. It's just got a different texture. And you kind of have to work it down in the the canvas has little grooves in it so you kind of have to work it down in there and sometimes I get just a little bit of water on my brush and that helps it to spread out easier and we're gonna do the edges too now if you were gonna frame this it wouldn't matter if you were doing the edges now I'm gonna dip into my white just on just a little bit on the edges and I'm gonna work some of that white in just to kind of give it a sky look and you don't want a lot you just want it kind of feathered in just here and there so it gives it kind of that milky sky look and let's go ahead and do our edges and I'm just patting it on won't spend a lot of time on the edges I can go back and finish that in a little bit but so let's get our edges going and we've got a lot to do on this so I'm gonna keep moving and if you get a little bit behind, that's fine. Just uh, go ahead and do the steps and you can go back and watch the replay if you need to. So Luke and Lane and Reagan, do you hope it snows this summer this year? Miss Pam sure does. I love it when it snows. At least one good snow a year. Same thing, I'm just going back and forth and really rubbing it in. I'm going to add a little, just a tad bit of water. Just kind of stretch that paint a little bit. And then I always turn it around the different direction because with these canvases, you think it looks all covered and then you turn it around a different direction and there's still some little spots that you haven't covered. Now I'm not too worried about this in here because we're going to be covering it up with the, with the snowman. And I'll warn you up front, I am going to be using the hair dryer quite a bit. Hi, Amber. Uh, Amber, this is what we're painting tonight. We're going to do a snowman, just on a little bit smaller canvas. That one's an 11 by 14. This is an 8 and a half by 11. So I'm getting a little more white and just feathering it in just to give it some texture. A little more water. Look how pretty that already looks and we haven't even done anything really yet. Now I'm not going to worry too much about feathering the, the white in over here because our snowman's going to be there. So 
so I was disappointed that we don't get to start the Hobby Lobby classes yet. Um, that they had changed the now our local store did not change their mind they got a notification from headquarters of Hobby Lobby today that they've changed their mind they first said we could have classes and just have eight to ten people um, but then I think they got kind of scared and uh, decided to just hold off for safety reasons and I completely understand so everything I worked on this weekend, I will just, we'll do that one next November. So I've got them all cut out and ready to go. So that'll help me get ahead of the game. Now I'm just doing my edges and I'm just patting it on because I won't be framing this. I like to do canvases uh, at Christmas time. I take down all my regular pictures that are on my wall, my family pictures and whatever I've got up and I hang canvases of things I've painted for Christmas or things I've bought all around. It's almost like we're moving. I just take everything down and Amber, my daughter-in-law that's on here, she can attest to that. <laughs> it takes quite the transformation, but I, I enjoy it so much and I look forward to it every year. And every year I, uh, I downsize a little bit of the stuff I've got, but I've still got like probably eight to ten big bins of stuff that I put up in the that's just in the house for Christmas all right one more edge and then we'll be done with the edges this is such a pretty color and again it is um, Americana deco art colonial blue it's just such a pretty color blue and it goes on easy but if you find it dragging, uh, just add just a, just a little bit of water on the tip of it. Okay, now we want to decide what's going to be the top, our top, and what's going to be the the bottom. All right, let me look out of them this light here, and I can see some spots that didn't get covered real well. Okay, I'm gonna get a little more white. I'm basically just putting it on and then taking it off a little bit. And then we'll just work it in. I don't want it too white because we're going to do the snowflakes and I want the snowflakes to show really good. Now you could do this uh, with the background uh, gray. You could do a gray sky. Uh, snowmen are really pretty on a dark navy blue. Uh, background also kind of makes it look like nighttime. Okay, and I think that's plenty good there. Okay, now I'm gonna have to get the hair dryer out and get this dry. If I don't, canvas takes so much longer to dry than the wood. Uh, you know, the wood will dry in just a few minutes, but this canvas, it's cloth. And it takes it a little longer to dry. So if I don't use the hair dryer, and I know it's loud, but if I don't use the hair dryer, we'll be here for four hours. Okay, so I'm just rinsing my brush out real good. I don't like my brushes getting dried paint in them. So let me dry this real quick, and then we'll get started drawing our little snowman on. Okay, so while I'm drawing this, if you need to catch up, go right ahead. You could use a pencil to do the next step. Um, I'm going to use the chalk pencil, just the white chalk pencil. And I'm going to use, let's see, on the bigger one I use the paper plate. Let's see if we're going to use it for this one. 
that's going to make a pretty big head. So let's just freehand it. If you have a smaller plate, I should have brought up a saucer up here for you. But um, I guess we could use, let me see what I've got over here in my cans. And that's another tip. You know me, anything laying around, I'm going to find something to do with it. Okay, that gives us, I think that's going to be just about right for the, you want to leave room for the hat up here. And let's just draw our little circle on here and we'll see what it looks like. If we don't like it, we'll change it. I'm going to come down just a little. Right there. And I don't have the can all the way on. It's a little bit off because I want him to kind of look like he's sideways. Okay, and I'm just going to trace around it with this chalk pencil. And it shows up really well on that blue background. Now I'm going to go off to the side to Okay, so we have part of his face drawn on there. Now we're going to take the white. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get his hat drawn on. Now you could do all kinds of hats. You could even do a baseball hat if you wanted to. Um, but this one I'm just going to do kind of a top hat. And for that, I'm going to just come uh, kind of right under that top circle there. Let's see if we can pull you down. Just right <clears throat> under this where his head curves up. I'm going to come right about, oh, just under it a little bit there. And come all the way across. And I'm going to draw it off on the end. So we're going to draw his um, <clears throat> the front of his hat. Want it to come all the way out here. And let's do oh, about right here. And we're going to curve it in to kind of make it look like a top hat. And that's what's great about these chalk pencils. If it doesn't come out just like you want it, you can always take it off. And uh, just wipe it off and start again. So we're going to go right down here. And then we're going to, so I just curved in, and then I'm just going to make him a little, oh, I guess the brim of the hat is what you call it. Okay. And so we're not even going to see the top part of that head because the black's going to cover it up from the hat and just all the way across. And then we will... Come across here and make the band, the hat band. Okay, so we've kind of got our hat going there. And that's just with the chalk pencil. So let's go ahead and do our, our let's do our, his belly or the top half of him. And I'm just going to make him kind of curving out just about where his neck would be. Of course, he doesn't have a neck because he's a fat snowman. And then curve it back around and down on the side because we're going to do the sides too since we're not going to have a frame on it. Okay, so let's start with our white. And I've still got some white out here. So I'm going to switch. And we were using this big one a minute ago. But right now we're going to use the uh, three quarters inch flat and I'm just gonna load it on both sides and we're just gonna paint this little guy and it will take probably three coats with this white and I'm gonna go right under that hat brim and smooth it out you know, see when you first look at it you think oh that's just gonna be horrible See, it doesn't really cover very well the first time. But this color is kind of dark underneath, so it will take, on the big one, it took me, I think, three coats. I had to dry it in between with the hair dryer. So let's just, I'm holding it straight up and down, my brush straight up and down to kind of fill in the edge, and then I'll fill it in. I mean, to line the edge. And 
And then once we get the third coat on, um, you won't be able to see the brush strokes. Okay, and I'm going to turn it around. I always like to turn my piece around to where it's most comfortable for me, rather than trying to strain and, and make it work. Okay, so we're still doing the head. Straight up and down, and I'm just following that chalk line. Now, I was holding it like this, straight up and down, and going flat. When I'm doing an edge, sometimes I will hold it straight up and down on the chisel edge. The flat across is called the chisel, and I stand it up and outline my line, and then go back and fill it in with the flat part. Smoothing it out a little bit. Okay, let me get on the edges. And then we'll dry it and we'll do it again. Um, it's really fun to paint on the canvas. It, it is a very different feel. And again, it, it, take, it dries differently. But I really enjoy it. I've done, uh, I guess the largest canvas I've done is a 16 by 20 and it was a Christmas canvas um, we also did for a charity one time uh, Debbie Secting and I she's our preacher's uh, wife and she oh man she paints so pretty but we did a painter's cloth so I'm not sure how big the painter's cloths are y'all know how big they are when you buy them at Lowe's to paint I mean they're huge so we did big scenes on a couple of those to be auctioned off. So I guess that's the biggest canvas I've ever done. Okay, so I'm just getting that edge good. Just kind of make it him, make him come down just a little bit more here. So it looks a little more proportionate. Okay, so we've got him off there. And let's do his belly. And we'll separate it by shading in a minute his belly and his body. Let's see here. And I'm just getting right at that neckline, right where his head meets, and just pulling it down over the edge, and then we'll do this. The, we'll do the edge here in just a minute. Smoothing it out, and I'm going to come all the way around on the edge. Let's see, did I do it both ways on this edge? Yeah, I did the whole thing on this one. Just patting it on there. Okay, let me do the edge down here and then we'll dry it real quick. This is so relaxing after a hard day at work. Anytime we have a holiday, a bank holiday, and we come back the next day, most of our bank holidays are on um, Mondays. So when we come back on a Tuesday, we always call it a double Monday. Because every, all of our customers have missed us and they have to call and catch up and see what's uh, about their accounts and things. And so we have a busy, busy day. Okay, so there's what we've got so far. He's not looking too good yet, is he? <laughs> but we'll get him there. Let's dry him and put another coat on. Right now he looks like he's a flathead up top until we get that hat on.
so let's go for round two. Let's see, the election day, I think, is, is it 22 days from today or 23? I know it's really close. I hope everybody goes and votes. I'll be going. Now, we're going to be going over this with the black for the hat. So I'm not going to worry about it if I get a little bit of white up above there. I was just wanting it to really connect. So doing it on the canvas, it just really dries so fast on the wood. You have a little more flex time while it's still wet to correct some things if you make a mistake. I think snowmen are one of my favorite things to paint other than flowers. I really like to paint flowers and hummingbirds. Okay, so we're not quite there yet. I can still see some of the strokes and I can see the blue between it. Let's see, I've just got a little bit of white where I do not want it so I'm gonna put a little bit of that blue on there before I forget. Just with my liner brush I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit right here. I have not been able to find another one of these low Cornell uh, liner brushes, which is my favorite, favorite liner, but I bought a, it's called Royal and Lane Nickel. I think I got this one at Hobby Lobby, but uh, it's, it's a little bit thicker, but it seems to be working real well. I did all the snowflakes on this other one over here that I did yesterday with it, and um, I liked it okay. It did okay. All right, so let's go back on the body here. See how I'm just mashing that down to get on that the, the outer edge here. And I'm going to stand it up and all the way around. And then just pull it out. I know you guys get to watch this, d doing it this way, and it's fun. Um, and it is a different experience. But when you do the paint parties, uh, the, the in-person classes and paint parties it's just a whole different experience and you get one-on-one -on -one, and like if you're having trouble doing something i'll come around and hold your hand the way it should work and uh, show you how to do that that um, that's been really help or uh, very helpful or um, i have a board that i paint on with you uh, to show you the technique the next step that we're doing so we go step by step and it's a little bit slower, um, so you don't feel rushed. And everybody's doing the same thing, maybe different color, but everybody's doing the same thing. So we're all on the same uh, steps and learning the same things at the same time. And it's just so much fun to be with like-minded people that enjoy doing the same thing that you do and they kind of get it. It's just a very therapeutic hobby. And you've either got a really nice gift when you get through, or if you sell your items, or if you just want to decorate your home with things that you've made. Okay, 
So we're almost there. That looks much better, but we're still not quite there yet. So I'm gonna dry it again. And then this last coat should take care of it for the white. And of course the black's probably gonna just take one coat. Everybody got your kiddos back in school and, and on schedule now. Kind of back into a routine. I want to see who got on here. Hi, Monica. Uh, for the background, let's see. Monica, we used, um, I used a Colonial Blue. It's Deco Art. And it's Colonial Blue. So I did that and then I just streaked a little, uh, just a little bit of white in it. Just a little bit to kind of give it a three three-dimensional look or just a little bit of texture not really three-dimensional but I didn't want the white too light that the snowflakes aren't going to show up so let's bring you down just a little bit here okay and uh, Lois hi glad you're on thank you so much this is what we're doing only in a little bit smaller version because I didn't have another canvas that size Okay, so we're on our third coat. That's still just a little bit damp, but I think we'll be okay. For time's sake, we're going to go with it. And I'm really just wiping it on there. I have to get a little more white paint out. Okay, that's covering much better now. Now on wood, it wouldn't have taken this many coats. And I have not painted on canvas a lot. So I'm sure there's probably things, tricks and things that I don't know about it that might make it easier. I did one oil painting one time and it was at Hobby Lobby, a, a gentleman was teaching classes there and um, it was a whole different feel now when this dries real good when this white dries um, we'll put some glitter on it and for the glitter I've got it's called deco art I can't see under the price tag what it says Starlight top coat and it's a soft glittering uh, coat so it's got just enough that you can see a little bit of a glimmer in it gotta see where that hat's gonna meet see a little hair there okay let's get his body A little more white. Can't believe this big old thing's almost empty. Now we're gonna need some more white here just a little bit, but um, I'm not gonna put it out yet because it will dry off. And it'll dry out, not off. Okay, it's okay if you're meeting this where his head is because we're going to come back and do a little bit of shading and that'll separate it. We're going to use some gray to do some shading on it. Let's try and get all this base coating on there first. And it's okay if a little bit of the blue shows through because he is supposed to look icy, you know, after all. He is a snowman. But you don't want it really showing through. I 
Okay, so let's do this edge down here. Pat, pat, pat. And remember, we're patting because we don't want a big glob up here, especially when you're doing a, a wood piece. Um, you want to be really careful. And you always want to feather out towards the edges. Okay, he's looking a little more like a snowman, a lot more solid. I could probably get away with putting one more coat on him, but for time's sake tonight, I'm not going to do that. So let's get, I think it's dry enough right up here that I'm going to go ahead and do his hat while this is drying rather than use the hair dryer again. So I'm going to get that same brush. And we're going to go with black. And you can use any black you want to. This is lamp, uh, lamp or ebony black, and it's deco art. So it's just, just a black. And you can see if you just got on, we just kind of barely drew a hat in there with the, the chalk pencil. So I'm going to turn him upside down. And black doesn't take a whole lot, so... I just put out a little bit because I can always put out some more. Now, let's see if this brush is going to be... I may have to go to a little bit smaller brush. Let's see. I don't remember which one I used yesterday. Okay, so I'm going to start down here at the bottom of the hat because I don't want to lay my hand in it here where it um, is. Let's see who's on here now. Hi, Mom. Peggy's my mom. You're welcome, Monica. And Ada... Where are you from, Ada? I don't think I've seen you on here for, before. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. All right, so I'm going to just stand it straight up. Oh, look how pretty that black is. I, you don't think of black as being a pretty color, but it sure makes everything else pop. All right, so I'm going to stand it straight up just to get my line where this, the head and the hat meet. And I want to be careful not flick it everywhere. So I kind of stopped when I got to the edge. And we'll fill that in here in just a minute. Okay. So bottom of the hat here, the brim. So that kind of outlined it there. I'm going to turn it around. And I'm just getting some paint on the edge right now. Just on that edge to kind of... And you want to be careful not lay your arm in the white where you just painted. So I'm going to hold it straight up. We're going to have a red band here, so we're not going to paint that black. And then I'm going to get a smaller brush and fill it in. And I'm going to go all the way off to the edge. I'm still just standing it straight up. If I had a smaller brush, I'd be doing it flat, but I think I can get by with this until I get down here. Okay, I'm gonna get a smaller brush for that little brim, the edge of it. I'm just gonna get a round. This is a number six round Royal Lang Nickel. I really like their brushes. I've never used them before until just recently, and I've been really impressed with how they hold up. Low Cornell has always been my go-to, and I still love them. But they're getting a little bit harder to find. Hobby Lobby doesn't carry Low Cornell anymore. Now see that black? We're just gonna need one coat of it. It just covers so well. Come off the edge, just right where that red band would stop, all the way down, and just fill it in. Everything we've had going on around here, a lot of things have been canceled craft shows and, and things of that nature. Um, 
So I'm not sure if I'm going to hang on to everything till next year or start trying to sell some stuff. Um, I fancy I sold several last month, but I was trying to hang on to some things in case, you know, some things came up. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to just, while I've got this round out, round brush out, I'm going to go ahead and let's see, the hat band's going to be there. So this is where the next black's going to be. And I'm just going to draw a line across there to kind of give us a guideline. So what we're working on now is the hat, and we're leaving a, a, a space for that, the hat band. I just love their little eyes. Okay, so let's bring um, all the way around. And now I'm going to switch back to my, I'm going to wash that out and switch back to my uh, bigger brush. And then we're just going to fill it in. That's looking pretty. I love that black. Is everybody that's watching, um, is there anybody on here that's never painted before? Oh, Ada is your friend, Ashley. Thank you. Thanks for telling and sprinkling. Which reminds me, if y'all don't mind, look what I did. I just got some black on there because I wasn't watching what I was doing. See if we can just wipe that right off. And I'll put some blue back over it. I think I had some on my hand. But um, if you've never painted before, let me know. And also, if you're new on here and this is your first time, let me know where you're from. And what the weather's like where you are. It's been so nice here the last few days. I would like for it to stay this way all year long. I'd be fine. But I do want some snow. I just don't like the cold that comes with it. If we could figure out how to get snow without the cold, I would be such a happy camper. Okay, so I'm going to fill the edges. Uh, go up here to the edges and do those. And you don't have to do the edges. Um, I mean, it would look fine with, without it. But since I'm not going to frame these, um, I just think it looks more finished if you if you go ahead and do the edges. But it's just preference. Whatever you like. Okay, now is it looking a little more like a snowman? And you could do a, a silver band. Uh, we're going to do red tonight, but you could do um, any color that you wanted to match your, uh, your decor. And this is just a simple little uh, snowman. You saw how we traced the pattern on. Nothing fancy. Okay, now I'm going to stop where the band stops. Okay. I'm going to fill it in just a little more. I'm going to see some little white there. I'm going to clean out my brush. Okay, and before all my blue dries, I'm going to fix that little spot where I got some black. And let's just use that round brush, see if we can fix it up right, because my blue is still good and wet. Now, a lot of people use egg cartons because the paint stays um, wet in a puddle longer. I've just always done it with with the um, plates. And that's just how I've always done it. So I'm going to streak a little bit of white in there. Kind of mix that in. Okay, now I'm going to bring it down a little bit closer. So 
we're going to start doing some detail work here. But let's go ahead and get the um, let's go ahead and let that dry just a minute. I'm going to put one more coat on this because it's still just a little transparent for me. So I'm going to put one more coat on it. Get that black out of it. The more it's drying, the more blue I can see um, through it. So we're going to go one more coat. Do you have any craft projects that you're doing that you're planning for Christmas? I know there's a lot of people that make homemade gifts for Christmas, and I love it. Amber, my daughter-in-law that's on here, she makes something every year usually and um, something different every year something unexpected and we always love it it just doesn't seem like it's just a few weeks till thanksgiving i mean this year has been so weird with covid and, and everything going on that you know we really haven't been in the stores to see christmas or thanksgiving decorations and halloween decorations even we just haven't been out a lot, um, and they, the stores, What when we do go out, the stores have been so bare that it just hasn't seemed like the holidays are up on us. I mean, they're, they're pretty much here. And I keep thinking, you know, i got to get busy. Now, I purposely just made, I don't know if, you, if you'll be able to see this on camera, but when I went around where his head and his body meet, I... I got a little bit of extra paint on my brush, and usually I tell you smooth those ridges out, but I purposely wanted a ridge there, because that helps give a little bit of separation between his body and his head too. So I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but, but there is a little bit of a ridge there, but that was purposely, um, because it just helps give a separation and to know where to, um, where to float and shade like we're going to here in just a minute. Okay, that looks much, much better. I may give these as gifts, but who knows? I may mail one of these or give one of these if you're local. We just might have some kind of a drawing next time. So everybody that comments and sprinkles the love shares this with somebody else. You just might go in for a drawing next week. I am just three people away, three people away from having 200 followers. And I know that doesn't sound like a lot to everybody, but that is a lot to me. I'm so proud of it. And I love every one of you. Okay, so let's go ahead while that's drying and do the red across here. And for the red, I chose, uh, it's called Tom, Tom, or Tompit, I don't know. It's probably Latin or something, but it's T-O-M-P-T-E, red. And it's um, Americana. I got these for nearly nothing. I mean, just like 25 cents a bottle because they labeled them wrong. It says white. Uh, it says it's white, but you can tell it's not white. So, uh, but they did send a notification what it was. So it's T O M P T E red. This is covers really well, and it it does real good for uh, Santas and um, things of that nature. So it's really good for that. So I'm gonna go to a little bit smaller brush. Let's see if I want to use this one. All right, let's try that. And it's always good to kind of size up what you're going to be doing. And I'm using this a lot on the chisel, chisel edge tonight to get things going on that. I'm going to use that round brush to go ahead and get the outline here. And this black is still wet and so is that white, so I've got to be careful. You always want to shake your paint up if it's been sitting so that it mixes with that... Um, not really oil that's in it, but the fluff or whatever it is. 
I don't know, just so it mixes. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit on the edge. Isn't that a pretty red? We've got red, white, and blue. Patriotic. <laughs> All right, I want to be careful and not lay my hand where that's wet. So I'm going to use my finger here. I use the base of my finger a lot. You'll see me doing that, and it just helps guide you. So I'm going to start at the top of the brim. Okay, and there's our band outline, so we know where to start. Now, let's see what, if we can get away. <clears throat> the bigger brush you can use, the, the better it is because you'll get, get it covered quicker, but you don't want to ever use one that's too big for what you're doing because it's just going to cause you headaches. All right, I'm going to... Just get it on my edge here. And I'm just right under the hat and then we'll fill it in. little grand dog that we have right now um, they have her trained at night she sleeps in a crate and sometimes she's ready for bed and sometimes she's not and she doesn't want to get in the crate but she is, is so good and Milo that we had too um, they just would play and play and play oh my goodness they played so hard and one night we were you know, we're always so cautious because we don't want anything happening to the grand dogs, but we could not find her. Her name's Phoebe. She's a little golden doodle. We could not find her, and it was about 1030, and um, we called her name. We looked upstairs. We looked downstairs, and we thought, you know, did she get out the door somehow that we didn't notice it because we always take them on their leash, and so we looked and looked, and I happened to just glance for some reason over at her uh, kennel, her little crate, and she was all snuggled up in her little blanket, already in bed herself. I'd left the door open on it, and she had climbed in there herself, and she was just looking at me like, what is y'all's problem? I'm right here, already in bed by herself, put herself to bed. You know, grandkids do you that way sometimes, too. I'll never forget when one time David, my husband, was um, babysitting one of our grandsons. I won't name him, Dylan. But uh, he was just about two, and he decided he was going to hide from Peppa. And he hid so well, David was about ready to call 911. He could not find the child forever, and he was hiding behind the the pedestal on their dining room table never made a sound for this went on for David said like an hour and you know he was really getting worried but at two years old he went that long without making a sound and he finally David heard him just giggle a little bit and he found him and his first thought was do I scold him like everything and then he was like, no, I'm just so glad to see him. I just, he just hugged him. <laughs> but those grandbabies and grand dogs, you never know what they're going to do. Okay, so this red covers so well. That's just one coat. And I don't think we're going to need to put a second coat on it. We'll let it dry a minute and we'll see. But um, let's do the edge. But now all of our grandbabies are... Our youngest one is five, and our oldest two are 17. Growing up so big. They've spent so many hours in our home having so much fun. Okay, so what do you think? These are getting there. 
All right, I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna put a second coat on that red. Now we could go uh, with the red. I don't know that I've got a dark, dark red here. This one might be. Okay, let's go ahead and, and do this because I do wanna show you the difference it makes, but it's Napa red. It's a little bit darker than what, it's almost a burgundy, almost a maroon, and it's Americana Napa red. And it's a good uh, shader for red. So let me dry it just a little bit. Okay, and let's do some shading on it. And this is a another Royal Lang Nickel, and it's a number 10 flat here. Y'all, I'm sorry if I'm missing some of your... Um, is it Aubrey? Is that how I say it? Aubrea Gonzalez? Where are you from? I haven't seen you on here before. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad you're watching. Okay. All right, so let's get back down here where you can see what's going on. I'm going to do a little bit of shading. It's called floating. If it's darker than the color you're using, it's called uh, shading. If it's lighter, then it's called highlighting. So we're going to do a little bit darker here. And I've got the, um, let's get some of this Napa Red. I think it's just dark enough that it's going to make a nice shading color. If not, you, you, all you have to do is add just a drop, just a drop of the black to the um, to your red and mix it up really good and you'll get the same effect. So on the bottom of my a little bit more water in that bottom of my brush I'm just gonna do a triangle in the base coat color which is that red that Tom Pete red and then I'm gonna get the uh, Napa red and then we're gonna blend it blend it. And let's see if that's going to be enough to make a difference or if I need to put a little bit of black in it. Let's see what it does here. Okay, that's dry. Okay, I think we're going to need a little bit of black. That's just not showing up like I want it to. So let me mix a little bit of black. And remember, black is very dominant, so it doesn't take much. I'm just getting a little bit on the end of this round brush here and I'm going to mix it in there. You don't want it black black because your hat's so black. Okay, let's see what that does. See if that makes a difference. Okay, that's a lot darker. And red is sometimes a little bit hard to work with. But I'm blending it across. Now let's see if it makes a difference here. Yes. I don't want to do it on the edge as well. Okay, can you see the difference that made? Giving it a little bit of shading. And we're going to do that on the bottom as well. I may not even have to reload. And I'm just holding it flat. And just kind of blending it in there. Do it on his edge. Oops, got a little bit of that. I forgot to get my baby wipes out. I always keep baby wipes out. 
You know, I haven't used it much on canvas, so we'll see what it does. But I got a little bit of that red on the blue. Not enough to really matter, but I still want to see what it does. Okay, took it right off. You have to be careful on canvas, though, because it, it'll take it all the way down to the white. Okay, so we've got our dark color on there. And then we'll put our white on there in just a few minutes. And you could also um, shade his, or highlight the hat in white, um, I mean in gray, you could do that. But I'm not going to do that tonight for time's sake because we still got to do his face. So let's do this shading around him, around his face and his belly. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and use the floating medium here. I'm going to get me a new plate. This floating medium... This one's folk art, but uh, Deco has it also. It just, it's the paint without the paint color. And it just helps you when you're trying to smooth things out, when you're shading and floating, it just keeps your brush moist. So I've got some white over here, so I'll just use that white. And I'm gonna use a little bit of, this is called Drizzle Gray. This is a ceramic coat. Um, and it's just a drizzle gray. So you can use any color gray, just something that's gonna be a little bit darker. Now, if you were using a gray background, you could highlight or shade him in a little bit of the icy blue color. So again, it's just your preference. All right, it's not gonna take much. And I'm gonna dip my brush just a little bit. I don't want a lot of it on there. And then I'm gonna get white on the bottom and gray. And then we're gonna blend it Blend it and blend it some more. Whoops, I got that on the wrong one. Okay, white on the bottom. Gray. Okay, and let's start, um, let's start under his hat. Make sure I don't have too much on there. And we're just going to try to work it in there. Just kind of separates the sections. Okay, see so if you can see that under his hat there. Just a little, like a shadow under the hat. Okay, we're going to do that all the way around the piece. I'm going to get a little more of that floating medium on there. And I'm getting in the white on the bottom. You always put your base coat on the bottom because you want it touching uh, the section that you base coated. And every time I'm gonna go back and blend. So let's go all the way around his face here. We might have to reload again. I'm holding it straight up and down and look how I'm using my hand as my um, guide or my anchor. I'm just kind of blending it in. This canvas feels so different than the than the wood. I'm just gonna kind of smooth that out a little bit with my finger. All right, let's get a little more of that floating medium. And again, I'm just barely putting it on the the tip, white on the bottom, and go back and blend some more. using my finger. And I'm gonna put a little more white in there. And blend it. I'm gonna blend that in. Okay, and Okay, see how that defines his head? You can see where the neck and the body meet now. And let's do his belly. Oh, we gotta do the uh, over here on the edge to show the separation. So 
blending it, blending it. And we're gonna go, hmm. Okay, so his head's gonna go up this way. So we're gonna go, just make it go right across there. Like that was his head. Okay, now let's do the same thing on the belly. Get a little more of that medium. If you get too much, it makes it really muddy. You don't want it that way. So white on the bottom, gray on the top. Really blend it in. I'm gonna go right on that belly. The grand puppies this weekend were, uh, or this week, were competing for belly rubbing time. <laughs> and so I have one on each side of me at one time rubbing their bellies. Now one of them weighs, I think she said 26 pounds. The other one weighs maybe 12, I don't know, she's little. But they were competing for Grammy's attention. I'm adding a little more white in that because that got a little too gray for me. Just a little much, so I'm just kind of working a little bit of that white in there. And I see where there's a little bit of white there on that blue, so I'm going to clean that up right quick while I see it. Just right around his belly there. Okay, so we've got that done. While I've still got some white here. And this red is dry. Let's first do it with a chalk pencil. Let's see who's on here. Sherry shared, and I could watch you paper. Oh, good. That makes my day, because sometimes I think, oh, I am boring them to death. <laughs> but I enjoy it, and I hope you do, too. Okay, so I've got the chalk pencil. Now, I've done it enough that I just do it with my, with my paintbrush. But I was just going to show you how to kind of do this. I start, uh, we're just going to start up here. You could start on the edge, too. But we'll start here, and I just make X's. So I'm going to start here at the corner. And I'm going to go down and at the corner. So I've got an X there. So I start at the top of that, the next X. It's out of the way. And then I'm going to go down. Now I'm doing this upside down, y'all, so it may not turn out just exactly right. Down. And then I'm going to start at the bottom and go up. Down from that one. Go down at the bottom. And come up down start at the bottom one and come up to that edge there and so you have your uh, cross stitches X's I guess is what you call call them now you could also put um, you could do snowflakes you could do dots you could do stripes you could do just about anything just whatever your little heart desires Okay, so we're going to have to get our white, and I'm going to try my new liner brush, my Royal Lang Nickel, and that white's gotten just a little bit dry over there, so I'm going to put just a fresh little puddle out here, and that's why on these paper plates, it does dry out a little more than, than if you're using an egg carton, um, but I just really like it, and I just try not to put out too much. Okay, I want an X here, uh, because his brim goes all the way, I mean his... Uh, Band. I couldn't think what I want to say. Band goes all the way around, so I'm just going to make an X from the bottom there, and then come up. So I've got one there as well. And then we'll just paint right over this chalk, and when it dries, the chalk, if there's any showing, will just wipe off. So I've got my brush a little bit wet, and this liner brush, I'm just lining it. Just kind of rolling it out to the shape. And we'll start over here on the edge one. And I'm going to go down. Go 
and that'll be the hardest is on the edge. Whoops. There we go. That wouldn't be as hard on, on wood, but it is a little bit more difficult. So I'm just getting loading up again. And I'm just going to start making my X's. I'm holding it kind of like a pencil or pen. Those edge ones up there. Now I can do it like this, but I was trying to do it so y'all could see. But we're going to, I'm going to have to do it this way because he's getting a little wompy jawed. Okay. Loading it up again. All right, so down we go. Lift up when you get to that band because you don't want to go in the, I mean, the hat brim. And up. Lift up. And if you do go over into the hat, you can always come back with your black. And clean it up. Okay, I think I'm going to like this brush. And up. Now remember, any brush that you use, the harder you press down, the fatter or wider your stroke's going to be. If you're wanting just skinny strokes, you just barely give it any pressure. Okay, and you can see those are not exactly the same each way. I mean, they're not perfectly the same size, but I like that. I think it gives it a little bit of character. So while we've got our liner brush out here, now typically I would do gray here and I would, um, you know, do some highlighting there. Um, but for time's sake, we're just going to do some squiggles and things. So let's put some squiggles here. And we're going to put some snow on his brim there, so we'll put some there, maybe there. Okay, and we'll put some snow there in just a little bit. Okay, so let's do, now since I'm going to be using black for the eye, I'm, I can use a pencil because it'll cover it. You know the eyes that we've done, um, I don't have anything over here to show but the um, the little ginger, oh, I do have the gingerbread. Let me grab him right quick to show you the difference in the eyes. Okay, so we've been doing this kind of eye. I call it the upside down U, um, I guess. So we've been doing those eyes that are facing you uh, head on, you know, uh, facing you. But for this one, this is a side view. So you want a side, um, a side eye, and I see that I didn't put any of that gray on the edge here. So let me do that right quick. Okay, done. Add just a little more white in there because I can still see some streakiness in that gray, and that fixed it. Okay, so for the eye, it's a, if you look at it this way, it's a V, just a curved out V, uh, and that would be, a, the, the doing it the right direction, that would be a V. So it's just a sideways V, and so let's do it with our pencil first. And let's decide where he's going to be. Now, this one is kind of looking straight on at the snow, kind of like right out in front of him. But let's kind of make this one look up. So we're just going to slant the V up a little bit. And we'll have him come in up here like this. And I'm going to curve it out because it's going to look like an eyelash. 
Man, I don't like that. Uh, let's see. There we go. That's a little better. So it's kind of looking up. The way I had him before, he was kind of looking out like that. So you're just going to kind of curve him out because he's going to have eyelashes. Curve it down. Put him a little eyebrow. And then for the eyeball, you're just going to, now this one's looking kind of up, but you're going to curve out. And then come right back towards the little part of the V and curve it around the other way. Well, can you see that? This way it looks like an A. This way it looks like a V. And we just did a side V. That's all we did. Just a side V and then just filled in a kind of a circle in there. Okay, so for this we're going to use the liner brush. But let's go ahead. I want to go ahead and get his nose, his carrot drawn on and it's going to kind of be pointing up too because he's looking up so we don't want it way back here because it's not the front face it's the um the side view so we're going to put it right out here just under his eye a little bit and just very lightly and i'm kind of making it curved a little into a point and he's looking up so that's a really long v and then I'm going to erase, erase it a little bit because that uh, we're going to use orange and it'll show. You could use your chalk pencil too, but I've got it just where I can see it, where I want it. And so we're not going to do a full smile because it's just a halfway. So we're going to come oh, about right down here, right below his nose, and just a half smile all the way up and make a half U for the little dimple, I guess, or cheek. Now for his button, we just do half of a button because the other half's on the other side of him. And we're just gonna make a half circle, just make a C. And then his other button, we could do it down here, just half off there. And those are going to be in black, so that uh, pencil will be covered up. Okay, so let's use our liner brush. And I'm going to use my low Cornell liner, one I like so much. And let's see if our black is still good and wet. Nope, it's not. So let's get some more. We used all that on the hat. And I do like, when I'm doing eyelashes and things, I do like for it to be a little bit inky so I add a little bit of water to it hi Carrie let me get up here and see who's on here now I get so busy oh good I'm so glad Ashley that y'all are still painting are the kid the boys are still with it wow good <laughs> okay and Carrie Davis have you been on before Carrie I've got some new names I've had so many comments this week new comments and new questions and interaction and I absolutely love it okay so let's do his eyebrow and I'm just gonna get a little bit on the tip and I do have my brush a little bit wet but I just want it on the tip there and I'm gonna turn it to where it's comfortable for me okay there's an eyebrow I'm gonna add a little more water because I'm gonna do the eyelashes here so you want it just kind of an inky consistency. And I'm rolling it out to a point. And let's do, I'm going to start right up here under the eyebrow. Oops, let me get you back down here. There you go. If y'all don't mind, please be sure and, um, and sprinkle the love. And that means Facebook doesn't like us using the word S-H-A-R-E. So sprinkle just means let all your friends and family know about uh, about the lives. And uh, sometimes I'll get out here and tell you about a paint party we're having. You never know. Okay, but Reagan and I are still working good. And Carrie said she's been on once. You saw the pumpkin. Okay, great. Good deal. Well, I'm so glad to have you. Thank you. 
Y'all are kind of my second family. I just enjoy it so much. Okay, so I've got my black loaded on here. And I'm going to just curve around because this, this is going to be eyelashes here in just a second. So let's go. I like to kind of go away from me. So I'm going to start back here. And really curve it around. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. A little more moisture to it. I'm going to start at the back of the eye. And curve it really down. And then we'll outline the eyeball in black. And then we'll put a little blue behind there here in just a minute. Okay. So I'm add a little more water. I'm going to do those eyelashes right quick. Good. A teeny, teeny brush. Now, if I were to really press down, it would make them so fat. But I'm just very, very lightly. And we're going to just flick out some eyelashes. And I'm going to do some long ones. And I'm going to skip a little bit of space so that I can put some little ones in between. Now, remember that eyebrow is probably still wet, so you want to be careful. I had a drip of water in my brush. See if I can get that off there right quick. Okay, I think we can save it. Had some uh, water that was up here on the ferrule that I didn't see it, so it kind of dripped out there. We can save him. Okay, now let's put some little bitty ones, short ones, in between. And then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Start about midway. And let's put some little ones. And there's your eyelashes. And then let's fill in his eyeball. I have a little bitty plaid. And it's getting to where it doesn't work very well. But I still like to use it. I don't know. He's getting pretty feathered. Let's use... I got so many brushes. So many brushes and then you can't find the one you want. Alright, let's go ahead and use this guy. Let's fill it in right quick. Just on the inside of the eye. And then I'll come back and fill it in with that other one. So we've still got lots to go here. But we're getting there. Okay, I'm going to have to get a different brush. That one's just really fraying on me tonight. Okay, let's try this one. It's about the same size, and it's the Royal Lane Nickel. I just love him. And it's a number two, so it's a little bitty one. And let's fill in that eye. I don't think I've used this one before. He's a little stiff. Sometimes when you buy the brushes at first, they've got some coating on them 
to keep them from fraying in the package and I think that's what this one had on it. Okay, while we're waiting on that one, that to dry, we might need to put another little coat. Let's go ahead and do his buttons. This is an angle brush. See how it goes down? Uh, it, it's a flat brush, but the, it angles down and you can get into corners and circles. So let's go ahead and use this one. I'm just grabbing some different brushes to show you and we'll do the uh, buttons. And I'm just holding it pretty much straight up, just loading some black on it. I think the puppy dog gave up. I don't hear her trying to get in anymore. And I've got the door open. She's just... she. I had the hair dryer on and she didn't like that. Okay, so I'm just filling it in. And then I want to come right out to his belly. I don't want to go uh, any further than his, the line of his belly. Okay, and then let's do the bottom one. I'll go ahead and add a little more black while I've got it on here to this. And then we'll put a little bit of blue behind his eyebrow. I mean, his uh, eyeball in just a second. Had somebody on here earlier from Nebraska. Okay, he's starting to come alive, isn't he? Once you get those that eye in there, they always come to life. Okay, I'm going to come down on the edge. Just fill in that button. this one out on the edge clean up a few little spots there okay so while we still got black, let's go ahead and do the, let's outline the mouth. And we're going to use our liner brush for that as well. And I've still got a little bit of moisture in it. But this black's getting a little dried out, so I'm going to add a little bit of water. I'm just, just a drop with my brush here. Because I when you're lining or eyelashes or anything like that small, you want to have it an ink consistency. Okay, so I just dried my brush off a little bit. Make sure you don't have any water on the ferrule like I did a minute ago. The ferrule is the metal part that, that holds the bristles in. Okay, and I'm loading it up pretty good. Make sure my hand's dry. And I'm going to do the smiley face first, or the cheek, I guess it would be. I should have put some pink under his eye before we did the eyelashes. I forgot. And then let's do his mouth. And I'm going to start. Remember this black down here is still wet, so don't get your arm in it or your hand.
this Lane Nichols a little bit harder to control than the Low Cornell. It's just taking some getting used to. Okay, so let's put some of our, we'll just use this color blue. But before we do that, I'm going to get my daughter and we're going to put some dots in the, but, in the um, buttons or a dot because it's just one side of it. And that's really a little bit dry. For dots, you want it to be, the paint to be good and wet. Okay, that's still wet enough. I'm going to kind of drip off of it. And we'll put a buttonhole there. And a buttonhole there. Now for the blue, we're going to go back to that um, colonial blue. Then we're going to do the carrot right quick and then we're going to do the snow uh, the snow, and we're done. Okay, so I want a little bit of blue behind that eyeball. So I'm just loading my liner brush up. Now these dots will be wet for quite a while, so unless we dry them with the hair dryer, so you want to be careful with that. All right, I'm going to go just below... where that black is. I wonder what it would look like putting some blue on this part too. Nah, I'll still do that. <laughs> Talked myself out of it. Okay, while this white is still good and wet, let's put the little um, sparkle in his eye. And I'm going to do it kind of looking up. So we're going to do an X. And we're going to do a cross first. We're going to do a big T, the long ones. Load again. All the way across. We'll do a short one. Right down the center. A little bit short one. And a little bit short one again. And then with that same daughter, these daughters I get at Hobby Lobby. There's all different sizes on the end, and they make it so easy to dot things. And I'm just loading it up here, letting it kind of drip off. And then we're going to put right in the center of his sparkle. Now, again, what I said, I should have floated a little bit of pink here for his cheek, and I can still kind of go back and maybe dry brush in between. In between. Um, but let's go ahead and put a little bit of pink in his cheek here. And for this, I'm using Anita's Princess Pink. It's just a pale, pale pink. And we're going to dry brush it on. We don't want our, br our brush wet at all. And we'll just use, I'll use this one. It's just really a scruffy brush. We've got a better one here. Just anything that's kind of stiff that you haven't really cleaned out. Here's one that's flat and round. We could use that one. So I'm just going to put a little bit on there because it's not going to take much. And then I'm going to get it on here, load it up, but then I'm going to get most of it off. I just want a hint of it on here. I gotta watch out for these dots down here. And we're just gonna circle it on. I might have to go over the black just a little bit more. Just a hint. Let's just go under here too. Okay. I'm just going to wash that out. Okay, gives him just a little bit there. I'm just barely washing that brush out on the washcloth. 
All right, let's do his nose. And for the carrot, my favorite color orange for um, carrots, it's uh, Deco Americana, and it's called um, Canyon Orange. It's a really pretty orange. I like it for pumpkins, too. It makes a real good pumpkin. Hi, Karen. Thank you for watching. South Carolina, wow. What's the weather like there? It's been really nice here, just in the, I mean, real cool nights, but then real warm days. So it's been really, really nice. Okay, so you can barely see that we've just, with that pencil very lightly, got his carrot nose pointing up because he's looking up. And let's get that outlined. Now you, once you get used to it, you really don't have to outline it, but I thought that would be easier for you to kind of see where we're going with it. I can see a lot of water in there, and I don't want that much water, so pat all that. All right, let me bring you back down so you can see. Thank you, Karen, so much. Y'all don't know what that means to me. That's so encouraging, because sometimes I think, am I the only one that gets anything out of this, and is it really worth it? Am I boring them? But then um, the last one I did, it's already got... I don't know, over a hundred views. So I guess somebody's enjoying it out there, but I thank you so much for watching. It means a lot to me. Okay, so I've got the orange on here and I'm gonna bring you back down so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so let's, here's the point of his nose right up here. And so I'm just gonna outline all the way to it. And I like it kind of bumpy. And what you could do as well is paint the nose all white uh, before you do this, where the blue is. But I think we'll be okay once we get the second, third coat on there. Okay, so there's the top half. And let's go down here. And some bumps along the way too. I like it curvy because you know the carrots, they're not straight. And then we're just going to stop right at that point. Okay. And I'm going to get my little brush again that we were using just a minute ago. This little flat one. We'll see how that one does. It might be too little. We might need to get a little bit bigger one. And we're just going to fill it in. And it'll take a couple of coats. And I just make it not completely straight across down but pretty close. And what's so neat about this is no two are just alike when you do them and that's what makes it nice to, you know, you can tell they're homemade because they're not all just exactly alike. And sometimes the little blemishes are what make it so unique. Probably would have been better to go ahead and do a base coat of white under it, but I didn't on the other one and it turned out okay. I meant to do that tonight. I made myself a note to do that and then didn't. Okay, I'm just kind of filling in around the outside and then filling it in. Smoothing it out. Okay, let me get this one with the hair dryer real right quick. definitely use a bigger brush to cover an area this size. I just had this little one right there handy. The next color we're going to use is brown. It's probably going to need one more quick 
coat. Starting to look like a carrot nose. Let's see? All right, let's dry them a little bit. And to me, this is just a very simple, not a ton of steps of painting, but you see watching this with me, how many steps it does take. And when you go to craft shows and things, you think, ooh, that's a little pricey. But now that you know how many steps go into it, especially if it's a wood piece, because you've uh, more than likely you've traced the pattern out, you've cut the wood out, you have um, sanded it, primed it, and gotten it ready, and then painted it, and with all these steps, there's a lot of uh, work and hours that go into painting a piece or making any kind of craft. So now that I, you know, I do it, I know, well, my biggest thing is I'll see something I love and I go, oh no, I can do that, I can do that, and then I get home and I never do it. I'll do something different or forget about it. But um, just kind of think about it next time when you go to a show or something like that. I've got one little spot here I need to dry and put one more little coat on it. This canvas kind of gives it a little bit of uh, texture. I'm just really laying it flat to kind of get it thick on there. And two, if I had done it white, see I tell you my mistakes too, if I had done it white you wouldn't see so much of his face through it, uh, the outline of his face. Uh, that would have covered that up a little bit. And so that's what I'm doing right now is putting it just a little bit thicker right along there so it's covering it up. And you can just barely see it now. Okay, so let's get this dry right quick. And... Uh, let's go ahead and do, I like to do some gray, like we did the outlining of the face, the shading of the face. Let's do some of that, so we've still got those colors out. So I'm going to go back to my shader, my flat brush, and on the bottom, the base coat is uh, white, and then we're going to do gray. So base coat on the bottom, white, a little bit of gray, that gray's getting a little bit dry, but I think we can salvage it enough to do what we're going to do. Reload it. Back and forth, back and forth. And let's just put a little bit behind his nose. And then we'll put a little bit under it, like a shadow. Okay. Now, get your brown and any pretty much any brown. This is Deco and it's burnt umber brown. So it's a dark brown, kind of a chocolatey brown. I'm going to use the liner brush and I'm going to do a little bit of shading and then we're going to do some lining on it. And then we're ready. I think we're ready for the snowflakes. So I'm getting just a little bit here. I mean, not much at all. We may have to get a little bit more, but we can always get more. And I'm going to use my liner brush. Oh, I'm sorry. First, we're going to shade it. So let's get, this is the tiny little brush. That one that I was using. And let's get just a little bit of orange. 
and then just a little bit of brown on there and let's mix them in okay see how that kind of blended in doing that and we're just going to come right under the ridges of the let me get it dry So we're going to come right under it with that brown, just where those ridges are, just giving it a little bit of texture. I'm reloading. And let's do the same thing on the bottom. And that may be a little hard for you to see in the camera, but it's really making a difference. So we're gonna come right from the bottom. We'll make it a little bit darker because it is on the bottom. And then I'm gonna mix that gray in just a little better. Okay, so there's the shading on his nose. Now let's take our liner brush with that same brown And there's all different sizes of liner brushes. I'm just used to using this really long one, but you can use anything. And we're gonna make some little lines just to show the dimples in the carrot. And I'm just loading that liner brush. And everywhere there's a little dimple that comes up, we're gonna make a little line there. Still try not to get in those dots because they're still a little bit wet on, those, on the buttons. Okay, so here's a dimple. Okay, so that's on the top. And let's do the same thing on the bottom. So let's see which way do I want to go here. Okay, we're going to go from the bottom up on these. And I'm not putting much pressure at all. So everywhere there that it curves in. And there we go. Okay, so let's put some snow. Now while he's good and dry, let's go ahead and put our glitter on. So this is, uh, this is folk art glitter. There's so many different kinds of glitter. This is a light top, and this is a heavy. So look at the difference in those. But I don't want that much because it, it has big flakes. Now this is good for some things, but for what I'm doing right now, I just want kind of a snow glisten look. Um, the glitter also comes in darker colors. So you could do, um, this one's, it says deep space blue, but it almost looks purple. So we, we don't want purple on our snowman for right now for the colors that we're using. So I'm gonna shake this really good because I want that glitter to come out. Let's see if you can see it on camera. Comes out real milky like that, but then the milkiness dries and all you've got is the glitter. And I'm gonna use my um, Quarter, three quarter inch brush and I'm getting it pretty dry I've got moisture in it but it's not super wet and I'm just gonna load it up now you could do this also before you do the eyes and the nose and everything too that would uh, work as well and I'm gonna do it off to the edges too and you really can't tell a lot until it dries and I'm gonna go right over that shading there some more of that in there and I'm just really pouring it on I'm going over that pink getting all down around the mouth And then when it dries, 
He's got some sparkle. Let's see in between those buttons. And you can see where you've done it and where you haven't. By the way the light's shining. And I know you're probably not going to be able to see the, the sparkle from there. but And I'm just going right over his mouth so that I can get everything on there covered. And I'll probably go back and do some gray around those buttons. And I'm not liking how the dot looks there. So I may go back and go ahead and put two dots. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll figure that out later. I do want to smooth it out. I'm not going to get any on his eye. Okay, now I can see it really well from here. It's really sparkling, but you probably can't. But that's also good to put, um, like if you've got snow, it's good to put some glitter over the snow. And they've got all different kinds of the glitter for whatever you're doing. Okay, so he's got some sparkle to him now. Get that little piece out of there. Okay, so before we do the snowflakes, let's go ahead and put some snow on his hat brim and on his nose. Now you could also take yellow before you did the brown and put a little bit of yellow highlights on there. But since we're going to do the snow, I think we're, we're just fine doing it this way. So let me find, I just want a kind of a scruffy little brush. Here's a pretty scruffy one. And we're going to add some snow. So I'm just going to get into my white. I'm going to load it up pretty good. And I'm going to just dabble. This one may be a little bit too wide. Now that I'm looking at it, because it's it's really we'll try. Okay, so let's put just a little bit of snow here. See how those brushes are coming out? So I'm gonna turn it on top and we're just gonna just dabble it on there. Okay, so that one's working pretty good. So I'm kind of holding it down instead of straight up, but because of the bristles on this. So let's just go over the tip of his nose. And get into the snow there. Okay, now let's do that. We are almost done, guys. I'm gonna get some new white for this because I really want it to be fresh and wet. And I want it to be kind of ink consistency. And we're gonna be using the liner brush for this. Hi, Rhonda Hunter. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much. Carrie said, I've enjoyed your videos, but I don't know where you are. I'm in Sherman, Texas. I'm about 50, about 50 miles north of Dallas. Uh, my website, I mean, not my website, but my business page is Young at Heart Creations. And so y'all be sure and watch the first of this because um, I had some sad news about Hobby Lobby, but it's not not bad news it was just a little bit of sad news about hobby lobby my hobby lobby i'm supposed to be painting there but anyway so you'll have to go back and watch the first of the video um, to learn about that news but so i'm gonna put you back down here so we can get these snowflakes on okay so i've got my white here and i'm going to add just a little bit now my water's getting a little bit dirty over here but i think there's enough white it's okay it's starting to look a little purple because I had that black and that red in there together. Okay, so I'm gonna really pull it out, twirling it as I go, and I've got some water on the ferrule, so I'm gonna get that water off. Okay, and we're just gonna start making our little snowflakes. And so I do a T, I do long. Make sure you can get where you can see it. Now, this big one that I did yesterday, I did it in about an hour, uh, maybe hour, 15 minutes. But it's just harder when you're instructing to go fast. I don't want to go too fast, so it, it does take a little longer when you're doing a live. Okay, so we're going to go long down. 
And then I'm going to load some more white. And we're going to go long across. So I just, I have a T or an X, whichever way you want to look at it. But I make a T. And then I come across with shorter ones. And a shorter one across again. So you make an X across the T. And then we're going to come back and dot them. But let's go ahead and do that in several different places because we want snow going everywhere. Okay, so let's do one up here. You could also do the X and it would just make it look like it's coming a different direction. We'll do an X here in a minute. Shorter, shorter. So this time let's do an X. So we're gonna do X. Make the first ones always longer. And then shorter and shorter. So that one's a, an X. And then I did a T. And we're just putting snowflakes all over and then we're gonna put the dots on them and you don't have to it looks like snow just like this you could also take cover your piece up I mean you're painted the person or whatever you're doing and you could splatter it with a toothbrush you get a little bit of paint on it that's kind of wet and you could splatter it all over you just have to be careful because you do splatter all over until you learn how to kind of control it because it does go everywhere shorter go snowflake oh I hope we get to see some snow my um son and daughter-in-law that we're keeping the puppy for they have been going all over Montana and uh, I don't know all up in that area and they uh, we're in a snow sleet storm the other night, so they've been on vacation. They live here close to us, and um, so they've had all kinds of weather. I told them, bring me back some snow. And I'm not putting much pressure at all. Okay, let's put... Let's put one more right there. Okay, now let's do our, this is my hardest thing. I never know when, when to stop with these. Okay, we're gonna do dots up there, so we'll quit. Okay, so I'm gonna use my daughter and this paint is still good and wet. So we're gonna go around, uh, first I'm gonna do the centers of each one. I'm sorry, I'm not, because I don't wanna lay my arm in it. I'm gonna start up at the top and work our way down. Okay. All right, can y'all see this okay? Your grandmother worked in Sherman for many, oh! Well, that's awesome. Cool. Small world. Okay, so I'm hoping y'all can see this okay. So we've got our snowflakes, but we're gonna add some dimension to them. And I'm just dipping up. Now, if you don't have one of these daughters, you can use the end of a pencil, or you can use the, uh, the end of your paintbrush and just, oops, I just swung water everywhere. Uh, just get it in your pa uh, the end of your paintbrush. But I'm gonna use the daughters. And I got these at Hobby Lobby. They come three to a package, I think, and there's different size on each one. So we're gonna put the big one in the middle. Okay, 
you go ahead and do those just right in the center and remember if you're going to use a hair dryer you want to let these dry just a little bit because if you dry it with a hair dryer on high and too close then it's going to splatter these dots everywhere okay so we got our big ones on so i'm going to go down to the um next size A little bit smaller for the ends of it of the snowflakes and you always want to go back and make sure you got each one because I always uh, miss one somehow and so just at the end of every line you're gonna put a dot and I'm pretty much like reloading it every time sometimes I can get two out like I got two out of that one And these are just a little bit smaller than the one in the center. And there are so many different ways you can do snowflakes. Some people do the, the V shapes on them. Those are really cute. And you can do just the dots. We're going to add some dots here in just a minute. I do try to go back and read all of your comments. Now see like that one right there? I just see that I missed a dot. So you wanna always go back and check it. What does everybody do for Thanksgiving? Do you travel and go somewhere else or do you have it at your house? We usually have it at my house, but we're having it at my um, son and daughter-in-law's house in near Fort Worth. It's in Newark. It's over by the raceway, the racetrack. Now, you want to be careful and don't lay your arm or hand in there. I see another one I missed. Don't want to mess up your dots because they, they do take a long time to dry. And when I do dots, I always let it dry uh, at least for a couple of hours really good before I seal it. And I'll show you in a minute how we seal it. There's different ways you can do that too, but I'll show you the way I do it. Okay, y'all tell me if you see a dot that I've missed up top because it is easy to do. Um, I, oops, just laid my finger in that, but it didn't mess it up. Yay! Um, my other son and his wife, Amber, that's on watching, they live in Oklahoma, and they're having a Halloween party with their congregation. So I'm going to be doing face painting at that party on the 31st. So I guess I'll be painting some pumpkins and some bats. I don't know what. Give me some ideas of what to paint on little faces. And of course the pumpkins. I think I thought of that right away. <clears throat> oh, a ghost. A ghost would be easy. So I want something kind of fast and easy. And I'm still just scooping up here. I almost forgot one. I haven't done face painting since my kids were in school. And we I did them, oh, for years I did them at the football games to help raise money for the band. Band boosters. Oh, I see one up here that I missed. Okay, y'all see any more? I think I got all of those. 
Okay, so I'm going to get a little, big, little bit bigger puddle of this white, and then we're going to put just some dots. And for that, I want something bigger, so I'm going to use... I'm going to use the end of my chalk pencil. Let's see if that's going to make me a good dot. I don't think that one's flat enough. That one's got a curve on the end of it. Um, a little bit different curve. Okay, let's just use the big one of these. Um, but you could also, again, you could use the pencil here. And this is a step you don't even have to do, but I just like it. You could also, like I said, flat, um, splatter it. But let's just put some random okay that's what I used yesterday dots here and these are really really deep so they will take a little bit to dry and once I'll show you how to seal it once you seal it Wherever you didn't touch with your um, glitter paint, you can kind of see right around there. I didn't touch completely on that. It's going to smooth it all out and it'll all look even. This is so relaxing, just dotting. Just takes all your worries away. Not that I have any worries, but takes all the world and politics and all the COVID and everything else off your mind. Okay, I think this little guy's done all but the um, sealing it. And what I seal it with, turn him around here so you can see him right side up. I can't hold it up too much or the dots are going to drip. But there he is finished. And that's just a really easy way to do that. We used a can. For those of you that came on late, we used a can to kind of trace him out there. Uh, we may do a, a different snowman, a, a full-size snowman later on. I'm not sure, but you could use this for Christmas or through the winter. I mean, it's not just a Christmassy one. And you could do his band several, several different ways. You could do it uh, striped. You could do polka dots. You could do uh, buffalo plaid. There's just so many different ways that you could do it. But to seal it, let me get you back up here. Let's see who's on there now. Oh, good. Y'all be sure and send me pictures on my business page. When y'all finish things, I love, love, love to see them, uh, see what you've done. But um, I use a spray sometimes when I'm doing my wood stuff. But more than anything for when I'm sealing them, now they have to be really good and dry. But I use this Mod Podge, and I know it's backward, but it's it's Mod Podge, and you can get it at Walmart. This one I got at Walmart. It's 32 ounces, and I like the big one because the big brush that I usually use will fit in it. There's a smaller size, and it, it doesn't fit real good. It, um, it messes the bristles up. It just doesn't fit down in the opening good. So this one I love because I can just drip, dip it in there. And it's going to go on milky. It's going to look like milk, just like that glitter paint did. It'll look like milk when it first goes on, but it dries clear, and you won't be able to, to see it. But it gives it a real good finish, and you can wipe it off. And um, if I'm doing wood that I'm going to put outside, I'll do front and back on it. But I just, so far, I'm really, really liking it. And that's what we did the, uh, the napkin art with. Um, so I just really like this. This I think this was like $7.99 or something, but it's really lasting me a long time. 
and I just love it. And it washes out uh, if, as long as you do it right after you're done with just hot water. It just washes right out of the brush, and it just doesn't mess it up at all. Um, so that's what I will finish this out with. Now you could also, on his hat, whoop, up top, uh, bring it down here. So on top of his hat here, or you could leave the band plain and write let it snow or uh, winter wishes, warm winter wishes. You could put something on his hat like that. You could also do, I've got wooden snowflakes. You could do 3D. You could put wood snowflakes on here. But what a cute little gift. And even if you did, um, let me see if I've got one of my small ones here right quick before I let you go. That I've done several of them. Oh, yep, yeah, here's a little bitty one. But these are cute for ornaments or cute to go on um, packages. But look how tiny that one is. It's just the same technique. This one's just... Uh, two inches by, well, let's see, I've got a measuring thing here. Let me see. It's two and a half inches square. So, but, and I put a little jingle bell on the bottom of these, and I sold lots of these, but I also used them as gifts when I was wrapping gifts or, um, you know, different things like that. Just little co-worker gifts is what I did one year. We did, uh, did those. And so I've got lots of things in mind that I want to do. Um, I've got something really fun that I'm trying to find what I need to do it with you. Um, on there, uh, still kind of Christmassy, but you know, it's not Christmas yet, so I can still paint. I would paint Christmas all year long if I could. Okay, so tell me what you think. I want some comments. Here's the smaller one that we did, and then here's the big one, and he's really glittering with all that um, sparkle on him. I know y'all probably can't tell, but so those can be in a craft show as gifts but so what you learned different tonight was we just pounced a little bit of snow on there and it looks like snow and I'm going to be careful because these dots are still so wet um you learned how to do a side view instead of just a right face on view um doing by doing this little eye here not real happy with my eyelashes because um I'm just not real used to this new brush it's the first time I've used it um I used it yesterday, but it's still a little bit different than the one I'm used to, so I'm having to train myself with it. It's a little bit harder to control, uh, but I think once I get the hang of it, I'm going to like it. Still prefer my low Cornell, but um, as far as I can tell, they're not making it anymore. So that's what we're going to, I mean, that's what we did tonight. Not sure what we're going to do next week, but I will let you know, so be sure and... Um, Click on, you should have a, a link there, or when you watch one of my videos, it'll say to get notified when I go live. I try to go live every Tuesday night about 6.30 Central Standard Time uh, in Texas. So I try to do it at the same time so you'll kind of know uh, when we're doing it. And I try to give you enough notice so that you can paint something with me. When I do my paint parties, uh, we do lots more than what we just do on the lives here. And we have so much fun, and it's so amazing to see one piece, everybody gets the same piece, and how different they all look at the end. Hi, Jean. Thank you so much for watching. And, um, oh, thanks so much. Uh, they're just something relaxing and quick and easy that you can do, and there's just so many different ways to do them. Um, but anyway, when I do paint parties, um, I am ready to do paint parties if you are local within a 50, 30 to 50 mile radius um, in your home, then we could just have five or six people and, you know, keep everybody apart. But if it's family or, or friends that you know are okay, I'm okay with doing one. You just contact me. My email is, my business is Young at Heart Creations. My email is Young Heart. There, the, the word at is not in there. So it's Young Heart Creations at iCloud.com. So that's my email. If you are interested in doing a paint party, I would love to. We've had teachers. We've done uh, congregations at church. And I know with COVID, everything is so different right now. But if you have a little group and you're wanting to do something, we've done, uh, we could do bridal, uh, the bridal, like her maid of honor and, and guests. I mean, not guests, but her, what am I trying to say? The um, Her bridal party, I guess. But you could do that, a paint party for, you know, something of that nature. We could do a pretty, um, 
like the initials. They could do their initials that way. So there's just no end to what you could do uh, for that. So let me know if you're interested or if you have any questions. Again, go back and watch the beginning of the video to learn about uh, about the change in my Hobby Lobby painting class. So go back and watch that. But that is it for tonight. Thank you so, so much. And don't forget to sprinkle. And uh, you just don't know how much I appreciate you being on here. And I hope that you've learned something. Um, if you ever have any questions, just send me an email or comment on here. I always go back and, and try to read the comments before Facebook removes some of them. <laughs> but try to, uh, to do that. Go and watch on my business page, Young at Heart Creations. Um, I'll show you my new bandsaw that I'm so happy that I got. Uh, it's a much bigger one, but I do have just a little short video of, of cutting some circles on there. And so if you have any questions about using a bandsaw, I've used one for years. Absolutely love it. Um, and I've cut probably a thousand pieces out on a bandsaw. But that is it for tonight, guys. You have a good, good rest of the week. And not going to tell you who to vote for. But I am going to tell you to go vote. It's very, very important that, uh, that you go vote. And God bless every one of you. I love you and thank you for watching. Good night.